welcome to another vlog today's video. So I say I promised I would not wear the Christmas hat in every single one. <laughs> so, but some of them I'm gonna wear it because I think it's cute. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm kind of a nerd like that. <laughs> so anyway, I had a request from a um, subscriber and she was asking about my power pressure cooker that I recently got for my birthday and have showed a few recipes um, using that and I thought that would be, a, she said she was thinking about asking for it for Christmas. So I thought that would be a great vlog today's video because other people may be curious about them as well and know whether or not it is worth it to them to, um, to maybe ask for one for Christmas or splurge and get one for yourself. Um, so that is why I am making this video and I figured it kind of fit into vlog -a days because it could be a Christmas gift idea and it could be something that you, maybe you want to buy for your mother, sister, brother, you know, um, somebody in your family, you may think this would be a great gift idea. I think personally think it's a great gift idea. I love mine. I mean, I love mine so much. Even my husband, it, and he normally is not like a kitchen appliance person and he really hates buying them for gifts and um, even though I ask for it. <laughs> But he has even said, this is like the coolest contraption. And it, it really is. It is amazing. So um, I'm going to get into um, showing you what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the features of it. I'm going to show you, um, tell you about some recipes I've made with it. I will tell you about my favorite features of it and then the pros and cons. And then after I get done showing you all that, I'll talk about the cost and all that. So the one I have is called the Power, Power Pressure Cooker XL. It's the eight quart version. Um, when I first, actually what I first heard about was I was watching a YouTube video and they were making something in the Instant Pot. And I was really curious about that. I'm like, what is that? You know, so I started um, Googling and I found it and I thought, oh, and it was $99. So I thought, well, that's not bad. And my slow cooker was starting to completely go away and not working very well. Only worked on high and then sometimes it wouldn't even work on that. And so I thought, well, it has a slow cooker. So I started doing some research on it. And so I thought, I want that for my birthday. And so I had, you know, told my husband that's what I wanted. Well, then we were in Costco and I saw this power pressure cooker. And so then when I got home, I started Googling, you know, reviews and the difference between the two. And it seemed like they were pretty much identical. I think there are some feature differences, but it seemed like the reviews were almost identical. Like I think most of the reviews were five for Instant Pot, five out of five. And it's like 4.8 and 4.9 out of five for the, the one that I got. So I thought, well, that just sounds great. Well, then as I was doing more research, I realized it was an as seen on TV product and it, that kind of made me nervous because I've gotten some as seen on TV products that I did not like and it's been so long since I've got them I can't even tell you what they are but but I've also gotten like recently I got the Vigetti which I love that it works just as it says it did on TV um, so I thought okay you know what though the reviews are amazing for this and not just on their website I was looking outside of the power pressure correct power pressure cooker website to look for reviews because I don't know, you know, you never know the reviews on their website if those are actually honest reviews. So I looked on Amazon. I looked, I mean, I looked everywhere. I can't even tell you how many websites I researched first because if I'm going to spend that much money on appliance, I want to make sure I'm going to get a good one. And so, um, I did a lot of research and I couldn't find anything wrong with it. So I went ahead and purchased it. So I, let's go ahead and go into showing you the unit and um, talking about all that and then I will go over the pricing after that. Okay, so here it is, the Power Pressure Cooker XL. This is an eight quart. Um, as I said before, I got it at Costco and um, <clears throat> first I will kind of show you um, the things it came with, and then um, we I will take it over to the counter and plug it in. It comes with a really short cord, which I think is a safety feature, which so I don't really consider that a con. Um, but I will go, will plug it in on the counter, and I'll kind of show go through the features with you. Um, but first, I'll kind of show you the things it came with. So here it is, right here, and this particular one came with a power chopper, which 
I don't like. I cannot get it to work. <clears throat> so, I mean, that was just one of the bonus items. Um, so, then I, it also came with this. I think this is a, like a rice measuring cup. And then they call this a ladle. I mean, look at it, guys. So, I mean, the bonus things are not the best. Um, but it did come with also, and I don't know if this is a standard feature on the ones that you order online. Um, but this is like for the canning. <clears throat> and then it came with a steamer thing as well. Um, and then your, your cord, of course. Um, and it does detach, which I really like that feature. Because then I just take, because I store this on top of my refrigerator. And so I can just take it out, put it in the middle of it. I mean, put it inside of it. And it goes. So, um let's go over to the counter and then I will show you all the different features about it okay so I'm gonna plug it in when you plug it in this display comes on which is really nice easy to read it's really big and <clears throat> so all it has all these preset buttons on here um, for the different um, modes, I guess you'd say. So um, I'll kind of go over each one of these buttons first and how they work and the ones I have not used. So this one is the delay timer, which is a great feature. Um, you can put everything in there and set it to start. Um, I don't know how many, I think it's 24 hours, which I don't know, that seems kind of strange if you were looking at meat or something because you wouldn't want that sitting in there 24 hours. So I'm not really sure with a 24, why it goes up to 24 hours. I personally have only used it for like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I, what I've done is like when I'm getting ready for work, I will, when I'm making my coffee, I'll come and throw everything in there, but I don't want it to actually start until like say seven. And so I'll do a delay timer until seven o'clock. And then um, I like just go ahead and set the, the then it'll start cooking at seven o'clock. Um, well, not necessarily. So that's another thing we'll have to go over with the cooking stuff. But anyway, um, and then, um, so that's what the delay timer. So when you press that, it automatically goes 30 minutes. And then there's this time adjustment button and you just, oh, Okay, sorry, I was wrong, that's for the cooking. You just keep pressing the delay timer. I've only used the delay timer, I think, twice. So you just keep pressing it until you get to the desired time that you'd like. And this over here is the warm and cancel button, so you just cancel that out. Um, the next button down here is canning and preserving. I have not done that yet. I have to admit, guys, I'm a, I was kind of afraid of this thing at first because canning has always terrified me. And I think it just comes from being a child and then, you know, those old, like, um, canning systems, you know, and like my grandma would always say, stay out of the kitchen when I'm canning. So it scares me. I have not used this yet. I will use it because now that I've been using it, I'm not as afraid of it, but, <clears throat> and it did, I'll show it to you guys. I forgot to show you guys that it come, it came with a, um, cookbook for canning. It came with another cookbook too. I cannot find it. And I just used a recipe out of it, but you can find all the recipes online at the power pressure cooker XL website. They have a ton of recipes online there as well. Um, soup and stew buttons. So when you press this one, cause I have used this one automatically goes to 10 minutes and that also lights up the quick, um, button. So when it does that, it's starting to pressure up at that point. But say you want you wanted a little bit longer time, then you press the time adjust button and you can just go up in single increments. One of the cons, I'll go ahead and say on as far as the time adjustment increments, you can only go up. You cannot go down. So if you pass the time you want to go, you have if you really are concerned about it going one more minute you have to go all the way back through the cycle again before you or just hit the cancel button and then start over again um to get the desired time um but the soup and stews i have used that i may i've made it made beef stew with it i have done um a meatball soup i've done a chicken zoodle soup and i'll kind of go over a tip with that one um so I've made all those on that soup and stew button. Um, I can't remember. There was an, I thought there was another one. 
and then there's the slow cook um, button so this one um, is just like a slow cooker so you press it this one is uh, so it automatically goes to two hours and then again you can do it this one does 30 minute increments on eat on the time adjustment so you can go up to however long you want on that the time adjustment is different for each one of these buttons depending on what you are making so I mean obviously I guess they figure with a slow cooker you're not going to want to go in one minute increments all the way up um, slow cooker feature works just the same as a regular slow cooker um, one thing I should mention is on any of these features once your time has gone up, gone away like you're done cooking it automatically switches over to this warm feature so it keeps it warm and it keeps it warm I mean it's it, it does it keeps it nice and warm so since I work I leave the house at 7 o'clock in the morning to leave for work I don't get back until 5 um, and so it the, if the food is ready to go and it's nice and warm so I don't have to worry about because with my other slow cooker you know I didn't mine personally did not have a warming feature I know a lot of them do but mine personally didn't and so you know there was times when I would have to if my husband got home before I did I had to tell him to oh, move, switch the slow cooker to warm I had a warming feature but I didn't have an automatic warming feature that's what I should say I would have to have him switch it to warm for me or if one of the kids was home have them do it so te so honestly I didn't use it as much I only used it on the weekends pretty much because it wasn't convenient for me but this one is been a lifesaver because there are some things that I'd rather slow cook versus pressure cook and I'll kind of go over those um, in my tips um, and this is the rice and risotto button so press that six minutes and that's for white rice and then if you just oh, sorry okay so six minutes and that it says right here food quick rice white but you have to be quick <laughs> and then you can just again press this button to get up to your desired um, amount of time on there okay and one thing I should have mentioned with the slow cooker one <clears throat> that I forgot about until just now when I was talking about the rice button sorry about that so when you press the slow cooker one it does have these quick select buttons it's gonna go off on me um, over here so it says food quick and it says rice white I don't know if you guys can see that or not I don't know if I can zoom in or not hold on no um, so it and then it says medium and it says rice for brown and then it has well and this is rice for wild so what this button is this is a cook time selector button so it goes along with each one of these so um, I don't know about the soup and stew we can test it and see yeah so it starts out at 10 or you can go to 30 or you can go to an hour so that's just a quick one versus just the different time adjustment and then from there you it you can't just do the time adjustment so it's either this one or this one or it starts over um, with the slow cook is the same way you could do two hours six hours 12 hours or you can do it through the time adjustment if you'd like um, so the rice is the same way this is for white rice cook that 18 minutes for brown rice 25 minutes for wild rice or you can adjust it through here if you'd like I have made white and brown rice it comes out perfectly on it um, as far as the um, amount of water and stuff I don't I when I made the rice it was in a recipe itself and see that's I'll kind of go over the instruction manual as well on that um, because I'm not really fond of it so that's definitely a con but um, anyway so let's finish going through the buttons and then we'll go back through all that stuff so the next button is beans and lentils so you press that again five minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes or you can do the time adjustment right there I have not personally done lentils but what I have done is um, made beans so my husband really likes pinto beans and I always cook them from the dry bean and I also make black beans quite a bit and um, I usually just buy the black beans because oh, having only one slow cooker before I would either have to choose do I want to do the pinto beans or the black beans so I would just do the pinto beans slow cook and I just buy the canned beans but now with this I don't have to do that because this can cook your beans so before <clears throat> It would take eight hours in my slow cooker to cook the pinto beans and the black beans 
And with this, I have found, now this is where you get kind of where you have to just test it and test it and test it to see how long for your desired doneness. Us personally like our beans to be more done than not done. And honestly, if you do it at like the 30 minutes, which is what most recipes, if you look online, they recommend it's like 30 minutes using one of these to cook a dry bean. For me, they're not done enough. So we've been doing about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. But, well, I'll kind of go over that on my tips as far as the beans. Um, but anyway, they do cook completely through. It is amazing how fast it can be. I've not done lentils in this yet. Um, I have not used this one. This is a fish and vegetable steam. I have not done that. Um, I have not done any kind of steaming or anything. But I believe that little insert that I showed you guys that it came with, I'm not sure how that works with the steaming. Um, I have not tried it yet. I don't know if that's to put above. I think that is to put inside of here and it puts it above your food and you can steam your vegetables at the same time as you're cooking, but I'm not completely positive. It's something that I'll have to um, test out and look online maybe for some suggestions on that. Now this last button, well the last button as far as the preset modules, this is a chicken and meat button. This button has a couple different features that I like. And I actually don't recall seeing this in the operator manual, but it was in the recipe guide, which I wish I could find. I cannot find it. I don't know what I did with it. Like I said, I just did a recipe out of it. Um, but anyway, so this button, and I actually also read this online too in other people's recipes. Um, so of course this cooks chicken, but the meat part of it, what's really nice is if you press this button, it says 15 minutes. You don't need to worry about for what I'm talking about because you can, after it heats up, you can brown your meat in here. So you, you know, it gets all nice and warm and it's doing that building up the pressure thing, but it's not going to do anything while you have it open and you can just brown up your meat because I, I feel like it suggests that you brown your meat before you um, just throw everything in. Now, I only do that with the turkey and the ground beef and then when I was making stew, I kind of just seared all the edges of the stew meat. But when I made chicken, I literally, I forgot to take my chicken breast out of the freezer. So I thought, okay, I wonder how this is going to work. So, um, the, for, you know, the default is 15 minutes on here. I read online that you could use it for frozen and just do an extra five minutes, just do 20 minutes. So literally what I did was I, and I'd made it with pasta and tomato sauce. So I just threw the chicken in there, the frozen chicken breasts. I threw in the dry noodles and I threw in a, um, a can of tomato sauce and then a bunch of spices, you know, for that. And then I just put the lid on there, started up, set it for 20 minutes and cooked it. And it was perfectly done. The noodles were nice and plump and juicy and it was so good. So good. Um, so yeah, it even cooks um, frozen meat. So after you do um, choose your desired thing, this on the lid here, and this lid is really heavy. Hopefully you guys can see that it's not too dark. On the lid here is a pressure valve. So it is very important, this, there's a closed and then there's the open. And I one time did forget to close it and I started hearing all this steam and I was like, what is going on? I go over and I realized I forgot to close it. So it was releasing the pressure. It wasn't building it up. Um, so you have to make sure you keep it closed at all times. And then um, after it's closed, you guys can see this. Let me move you up a little bit. Okay. There is a safe lock feature on here. So you get it on there and then it locks up and over here where you can't see it but here let me see if I move you guys over there so it says open lock and close so you guys have to open it and that's where it's locked it does not come off and that's just a safety feature for the pressure cooker and it does remind you on here as well to make sure you close the valve so let me Let's go, oh, well, let me show you real quick what it does. So when you get it all in there, then let's just say that we're going to do like a rice. You go like that. It says six minutes. And then it'll do, see, it'll do that little thing right there. And that's where it's building up pressure. 
Well, I'm going to take you back over and we'll talk about um, some of the pros and cons and I'll show you that and then one of the cons has to do with the pressure. And then I'm going to show you like the delayed timer, say 30 minutes, you want to slow cook something and then you just leave it like that and then um, it starts timing, starts, um, counting down your 30 minute delayed timer. So that's how that works. Okay, so we're back over on the table. So I want to first go over like what my favorite features are of this product. So I like the locking lid that makes me feel really safe when it comes to building up the pressure. I can't pull it off accidentally. So nobody can walk along and just accidentally pull it off. So then it makes you stop and think, wait a second, why can't I pull that off? So I really like that feature on there. Um, the pot inside is a see it is like a Teflon nonstick. I, um, I have not had anything stick in it, but I have and a couple the slow cooker stuff. I have sprayed this cooking spray on there. I don't know. I, I've heard that you probably that you shouldn't do that with Teflon, but I don't know. I just feel like it might stick, but it doesn't. Um, I love the warming mode. I like the one touch buttons. That is a nice, nice feature. I like the preset cook times. Um, the delay timer, I love that, and then that you can adjust your time on there. So those are my favorite features for sure. Um, let's kind of go over the cons because there's not very many. One of them is the instruction manual. I it, it's very poor. Um, it, it's more it, it doesn't really give you a lot of information. It tells you the built-in safety measures, of course, you know all the different safeguards, um, and it gives you general operating. But the general operating is really like, how do you close the pressure valve? How do you put the lid on there? Um, <clears throat> you know, there's, that's it. And then there's this little thing on the side right here. And this is called a condensation cup collector. It tells you about that. Um, it, it's, it's just very, I don't know. I just, I feel like it's not the best. The cookbook was okay. I liked the cookbook. And again, I wish I could find it, but here's like the candy one. It looks just like the candy one, only it just has its recipes. I, what I don't like about it is it, there's a couple of things on the, and I think it's because it's written probably for all the different models. This one um, is the eight quart. I think it, there's ones that are six, 10, and maybe 12. And I'm wondering if they have different features because in the cookbook, it would say something, press some button and then do you know do this and do that but it was out of order like it wasn't working in the order that it was telling me to work so I have used it for ideas but most of my recipes that I have found have just been on other people's websites or I have just I have just um, taken a recipe that's normally a slow cooker recipe and just tried it in here to see if it would work and it did so I think it's just going to be one of those things where you just have to trial and error basically um, so then, you know, the lid is really heavy. It's really heavy, really clunky. Um, one of the things you are supposed to pull this out for cleaning, and I have not done that yet. So, I'm not, yeah, maybe I should do that. <laughs> but, um, it's just really heavy, really clunky. The whole thing is really heavy. I keep it on top of my refrigerator because I, it's huge. It's really big for one thing, and I don't like things on my countertops. Um, so I do keep it on top of my refrigerator. So it's kind of a pain to get up and down. But um, so that's, I mean, that's just my personal like con. Um, and the, my, only, my only other personal experience that I would say that is a con is it's kind of misleading in the claims as far as how long the cooking time is. So the claims on it, of course, is like cook chicken in 15 minutes. Um, make you know rice in six minutes okay but one thing it does not tell you in those ads and in like the quick reads is that it has to pressure up and depending on what you are cooking 
is how long it takes to pressure up. I've had some things take up to 15 minutes to pressure up, and I believe any rice dishes were one of them. So you have to add that to the time. So you can't just think, okay, I can have rice in six minutes. I have to have dinner on the table in 10 minutes. So rice six minutes on the table. No, you need to allow for at least 15 minutes for it to pressure up before it starts actually counting down the six minutes. And it's like that with anything that you're using the pressure, the pressure for. And so um, just keep that in mind just when you're looking at, if you do get one of these and you're looking at any of the recipes, just keep in mind to add, just add 15 minutes just to be safe for it to take. Because I think that's about what I've timed it. And it's the same thing for releasing the pressure as well. Um, you can let it naturally release. And I've actually read that that is better as far as keeping the flavor in the food. But I personally have not noticed a difference. Um, so what I mean by that is if you just let it after your timer goes off, it'll beep, it goes to warm, and then you can just leave it in there. And if you just let it, if you leave it there, it'll depressurize itself. And then when you, when, if you let it sit there long enough, usually 15 minutes or so, then when you go turn the pressure valve to the steam release, it doesn't release that much pressure and it's done. And you just have to wait for it to done release the pressure before you can safely unlock it. Um, but you can, if you need to get it right away, you just release the pressure, but it does take anywhere between five to 10 minutes to release all the, all the pressure through the steam valve. So again, that's more time. So I just, I, I have tried to add on about 30 minutes onto the time, but that's still, I mean, if you're looking at, you know, even chicken, putting it in the oven, you're, you're looking at 30 to 45 minutes for a chicken breast in the oven. And that's a raw one. That's not a frozen one. And then you also, you have to cook the pasta separately. You have to cook the sauce separately. You can do all of this in one. So it's still saving you time, even adding on those extra, you know, features. But it is kind of misleading in the claims. Um, one thing I read, but I personally have not experienced, but it seems to be very consistent across the board with reviews. And that is they have, if you order it through their website, um, it's very, very slow shipping. It's expensive shipping and customer service apparently is not very friendly and not very helpful. Um, I have not had to call customer service for anything, but I guess when people have called and order on them online, it's been a very, not a very pleasant experience. Um, but then when they have ordered it through the website, um, which I don't recommend to anybody because it's more expensive for one thing through there. Um, and I will go over the prices with you when I talk to you guys face to face. Um, and so, um, anyway, so I, that's what I've heard. And like I said, I haven't had to call customer service for anything. So, um, I have not experienced that firsthand, but in that case, I would just recommend buying it, um, through somewhere else besides the website, if that's the case. Now the pros, cause there's quite a few of them. Um, it's fast. It is fast. It's faster to use this than any other method that I'm finding. It's easy to operate, easy to clean. Okay, now the cleaning is kind of a con and a pro. So since it is Teflon, it's easy to clean. But inside, and I know there's no way that you'd be able to see this on camera, um, there's little ridges inside. And I don't know what those ridges are for. I don't know if it has something to do with when you're browning the meat, but it's on just the bottom of it. Not sure the reason for the features. But um, sometimes those can be kind of hard to clean. And then I noticed it kind of, if you don't kind of let it soak and clean it really well um, with like a degreaser, like, um, and I, you can put it in the dishwasher and I just haven't done that because it's so big and I never have room in my dishwasher for something big like this. Um, so I just wash it out. But I notice I have to use a really good degreaser de dish soap or it kind of keeps the smell of the last food that you made. Um, so, you know, that's one thing. Um, and since it only takes just a minimum amount of water to cook it, it retains all those nutrients. So you're not like boiling it out. So like if you're, it's just like when you're steaming the vegetables, you're not steaming, you know, you, you're not boiling all that, you know, the nutrients and minerals out. Um, it cooks frozen foods. It, the food comes out perfectly cooked and it, and it tastes really good. The flavor, you've not lost flavor in it at all. Um, so some of the things that I have made in it, I've made a pot roast in it, came out perfect. I did that on a slow cook, the beef stew. Now I've done that on two different ways. I've done it through the soup version and through the slow cook version. 
I prefer the slow cook. I feel like you get more of a flavor out of it. Um, when, you know, the meat, because stew meat tends to be a little bit of a tougher meat, you typically, and so um, you just, it, you just get a better outcome, but you can, it does still taste fine through the quick method, but I do recommend the slow cook any kind, using any kind of um, tougher cut of meat. Um, I've done beef stroganoff, again, I did that slow cook version. Taco soup, I did that through the quick version, and it came out perfectly. The flavor was amazing. Um, and I just browned up the turkey a little bit first and then I didn't, not all the way through, but just, you know, kind of browned it up and then cooked the rest of it. I did the chicken pasta with tomato sauce, as I told you about. And then I did a rice meal, but it also had chicken in it as well. So I cooked a little bit longer than the six minutes that it recommended. Um, and then the pinto beans and black beans. So what I was going to tell you about, about those two, I've done them on both the slow cook and the quick method. I prefer the slow cook. Again, I feel like you kind of, you cut in, in situations where an item is normally used in a slow cooker, if you do it the quick method, you lose kind of that slow cook um, taste. So again, I just, I believe with those types of things, if you have the time, do it the slow cooker method. Also one of the things with the cleaning. So let me take you off of here so I can show you. Okay. I say take you off of there. I meant my off of my um, mount. So I left this on here. I made some beans in it yesterday, and I wanted to leave this in here so I could show you that. Um, kind of blurry. In this little lip here, see this part comes out right there, and then I guess that's probably the heating element and all that inside of there. This does not come out at all. It does not move. Nothing. So you have this little lip right here and see it got like beans in there when I was ladling them out. So I'm going to have to take a brush or something. It didn't do that the first time. I guess I was neater the first time. So I'm going to take some kind of brush or rag or something because I can't even reach my finger underneath there. So that's another cleaning thing. They, I don't know if they should have just, I know this is because this is the locking feature. This is part of the locking lid right here. So I know that's why it's like that, but I don't know. I just, this is, will bug me that there's stuff underneath there, but <laughs> so I'll have to clean that out. So that is one of the cons as well, as far as that it's easy to clean, but not easy to clean, if that makes any sense. So, um, I will go over the prices with you, but I'm going to do that face to face and then, um, close up the video. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that overview, and I hope I did an okay job highlighting all the features and and all that with the units. So I looked up some prices for you guys because I got mine at Costco, and it was $89 for that particular unit, which is the 8-quart unit. Um, and as I showed you, I don't put in much stock into the bonus, you know, fee bonus things it gave me because I wasn't too impressed. But, um, so it was $89. Now, I saw it in my store at Walmart, but it was the six quart one. It's the only thing my particular Walmart carried, and it was $78, $78 or $79. Um, oh, I have it written down here, $77. <laughs> so, um, that's how much it was in store for the six quart. They didn't carry the eight quart. And I was almost got that one, but then I thought, why not spend a little bit more? Plus, I feel like Costco has a little bit better of a return policy than Walmart. I've heard of some people having some issues with Walmart taking appliance type things back, at least at my particular Walmart. So I thought, I'm not even going to risk it. Plus, this one's bigger and I can make a lot of soup and that kind of thing. Um, then I went on Walmart.com to see how much the 8-quart one and it was $140. Now it's not sold by Walmart. It was sold by some other company. And so I think that might be the reason why. Um, Walmart itself did not sell it, but Walmart has other like sellers in its marketplace. And so that is, it said sold by and it said cheap something, which that's not very cheap. But anyway, um, I don't have a Target here. Sad, huh? I know. <laughs> And so I went on Target.com and it was like $119.99 on there um, for that particular, for the same exact one, the eight quart one, even with the same, you know, wonderful bonus, you know, chopper thing. Um, then I went on 
Amazon.com and it was only $74.99. Now, when I first was looking at the one that I got at Costco, it was not so, I looked this up this morning and so it has recently gone down to $74.99. It was the same price that it was in Costco before. It was $89.99 or $89, I think it's $89 even, maybe it's $89.99, I don't remember. And, um, and I don't, I'm not an Amazon Prime member since I don't order a lot from Amazon and so, um, I would have had to pay shipping on that as well. So I figured, you know, I'm just going to get the one in Costco. Plus, I'm so impatient that I didn't want to wait for the, you know, wait for it to come in the mail. Now, you can go on the actual website, the Power Pressure Cooker XL website, and it's $129.96 plus shipping. But you pay in three easy payments of $43 and something. But that doesn't include the shipping. And so... If you have a Costco, I just recommend going, well, actually, if you have Amazon, Amazon Prime, I, I recommend you ordering from there. It's interesting because it says it's sold by Power Pressure Cooker, but it does have Prime on there, so it's, I, I'm guessing, and it does have the Prime, um, it's a Prime, whatever, Prime product, so you can get your Prime shipping on there. So I'm guessing that Walmart, I mean, Amazon must keep some in their warehouses, is, is what I'm thinking, so that's why they have them, because as I said, previously um when i was showing you the unit i've heard a lot of bad things about really slow shipping and really um expensive shipping through the power pressure cooker website so it just depends on you i mean I, it looks like amazon's the cheapest way to go um and there are units that are um I think there is six, eight, and ten quart units. And like again, I highly recommend this product. I think it would be a great gift for anybody who loves to cook and maybe doesn't have the time to devote to being in the home. Like if you don't, if you work out like me, if you work outside the home full time, this is a great unit to have because it is set and go. And I love that feature about it. And you don't have to worry about it because it's sitting there warm, waiting for you to get home to you know to serve dinner. So I hope you enjoyed this little gift idea and review and I will see you in the next vlog video. Bye!